This is a lecture on life after death. We all, sooner or later, ask questions about this. When we're quite young, we don't think much about it, but when you get to be my age, you kind of reminisce a little bit and say, hey, it's getting closer. So you want to find out as much as you can what it really is. You've heard me say before, but it's a good quotation. The Chinaman said, death must be a wonderful part of life because everybody does it. So that's one thing you can depend on. You're going to go through it sooner or later. Death is very natural. Everything that is birthed on planet Earth dies, goes through that process. So death is not an enemy. Now, each night when you go to sleep, but sleep is a miniature death. The difference is that the silver cord's not broken. Therefore, death really for us, when it comes, will be no strange land. So the experience of death as we have learned to listen to other people is all wrapped up in one thing, the loss of the physical body. So we want to learn that it's a lot better, a lot more wonderful, exciting things. And yet there are some things we have to be aware of that happens to us. We have read in different books, heard different stories, about individuals who were on the operating table and came back to life, people who were drowning, came back to life, people who attempted suicide and didn't make it, and people who have had tremendous accidents. They tell of a beginning of a death state of consciousness. So there are many records telling us sought meditation, which you're all working towards, and some of you have reached. Know that death is not really a frightening thing. So let's us who are beginning to study, to beginning to want to know, climb down off of this high horse as if we know it all, and start regulating our desires to know, and stop thinking in terms of emotional ignorance. We are the king of our kingdom. And it's up to you to make all your subjects, which are your thoughts, beautiful beings in your kingdom. So we don't want to be a smug tyrant. We want to have the zest to learn, to live, and to know the life as it really is. Every one of us is peopling ourselves with all kinds of imagery. We have what I call offsprings. And these are the desires and the fears that we build about ourselves. Every human has undeveloped senses. And we are trying to develop our senses into extrasensory perception so that we don't have to be afraid of the unknown. Those who are still blind would rather criticize than take the time and make the effort to awaken themselves to those beautiful states beyond the physical phenomena. It takes time, it takes effort, it takes work. For most individuals, when they cross over, there's no sudden change at death. What we have to realize is our thoughts, our desires, our habits are still with us after we pass out of this phasing of consciousness. Each person doing your life makes for yourself a bed of consciousness which you have to lay in. 
we who are still in a physical body, we have to make changes. This is the place of learning. After we drop the body, for the average individual, learning stops. Those, of course, who study, develop consciousness to go beyond the physical phenomena, we have beautiful groups, beautiful places to continue studying, to continue growing, because the mind does not get lost in the imagery of its own world. In many instances, all that an individual has done is step out of the physical body into the pattern of the second physical, which is exactly the same as the physical. But here in time, passions, emotions, and intellect, you begin what is called a review. In every part of our life, everything that you've ever done that has any substance to it, you have to continue with it. But we have a body that is beautiful and light, passes through walls, it flies across the sky, there's no fatigue, there's no weariness or pain, and there's no dollars to hustle for. This goes for a little while, of course. But soon, we find that the personality doer, the ego, at death states, having their consciousness awakened from a sleep, and many people are put to sleep right off, the physical body has to be what we call disintegrated, decay. This is why I say to those of you who have the courage, cremation is the best. It's also the cheapest. If the body doesn't disintegrate quickly, the personality will usually be, after it has gone through a few moments like Billy's mother, they're put to sleep because they go to screaming and yelling and a lot of hysteria takes place. If it takes a long time and when they're awake and they can't stand the new review that has to take place, they can become what is called walkers of the sky. I call them earthbounds. And this a lot of us deal with when we first become psychic. That's the reason I really, really try to prevent all of you in the early days of your unfoldment to get into the psychic realm because a lot of the earthbounds are not too pleasant. A lot of them are very hateful. They've been killed or capital punishment or they've been murdered. A lot of different things have happened and these are very hateful beings. You like some churches call them demons, but that's nonsense. Absolutely nonsense. They are individuals who have lost their body before their time and are mad at society. They're very, very mad at society and they try to take out their revenge by going into bodies that are receptive to them. This is why I say you're better off if you stay away from those things that open you up to this world because they will enter into those who are open to it. But I've had a lot of experiences like this. So I'm not talking about something that I don't know quite a bit about. I remember when I first opened up, there used to be a woman come and stand by my bed. And she'd come in her etheric body and it was the strangest looking thing. It looked like blue lines. And for the longest time, I couldn't figure out what those blue lines was. Because then she would take on her second physical form and it'd be a woman standing there. I never did find out who she was, but she was attracted to my bedside for some reason. I hope not what you're thinking, but anyway, she was there. <laughs> but it was her bloodstream. It was her bloodstream. Because see, blood is astral light. I didn't know it then. And her, her counterpart still had the astral light in her second physical body. And I was looking at the complete bloodstream of her physical body. It was astral light. That's the reason the doctors haven't been able to make blood. 
They don't understand what it is. Now, the living soul has to review the past life. Once released from the earthbound, it moves into a mental, physical, where it starts reviewing. In this reviewing, you still function with hearing, smelling, taste, and feeling. But you are all wrapped up, completely enclosed in your own little world. It's quite a sight to see. As if you were in a great dream, and it expresses your life as you have lived it. All the way, th the only thing that is different, you start from your old age and you go back, back through to a baby where you were birthed. I know because I have done it and watched it and then came back through the birth channels and came back to oddly. So I went both ways to prove to myself that I wasn't imagining anything. And when I went home to Troy, Missouri, my uncle, who is about 10 years older than I am, I was talking to him, and he says, yes, I remember when you were born. The whole town remembers when you were born. Because you see, mother went to bed about 12 o'clock. And when she woke up at 6 o'clock in the morning, I laid beside her. And so the whole town was shook up. How in the world did that baby get beside Mama, laying there laughing and a-giggling and already birthed? So I had a rather strange birth. At least Troy, Missouri thought it was. And my uncle thought it was. Now, one of the things that you can do when time comes for you to look into these records, people dress, work, and play as the desires as they lived and reproduce themselves. So it's very easy to look into those records of the second physical and see the hell world or the heaven world and how they are dressed, and you can tell the period of time in which they lived. The period that I sort of enjoy watching is back in Jesus' time. I also enjoy the time when England and France was having their kings and queens and Count Charlemagne was waltzing all the ladies. I sort of enjoy being there looking at that. Once a dream of the earth desire ends, then comes what we call judgment. That is you, set in your own judgment. There is no such thing as an angel sitting up there, reading your records and looking down his nose at you, saying, uh-huh, look what you've done. You can forget about that. You're looking at your own, and it, look, and it looks just like a movie. Because when I died in that period of time back, I think it was in the 60s, I went, and here I was sitting, looking at my review. I was looking, just like a movie. I was looking at me. And I was seeing everything I'd done, judging, setting up what I did and what I should have done, and all the things. I was just looking at it. And one of the brothers of light come tap me on the shoulder and says, you are a teacher who needs to re return to earth because you went to earth too soon. Now go back and do your job. I said, okay, if that's what I'm supposed to do. And I sort of, in my mind, I stepped in an elevator and I went zoom and I was right back into the body again. So I have seen parts of the review. I know that it takes place. Now what happens is we go into the hall of light, which I'm trying to get you all there now. Now in this hall of light, people, the personality tries to escape the light. They will hold on to the second physical dream with all kinds of tenacity. They won't go into the light until they're just kicked into it. And here I am trying to teach you to get into the light now. Why? Well, 
You have to go into the light for the great cleansing, the great review. People, you can see them, and when they start going to the light, screaming and yaller, hollering and grinding their teeth, and calling to God and calling to friends and calling to Jesus, Buddha, whoever, whoever they had placed an imaginary thing on that was going to help them after death, they call to. But it doesn't do any good. They have to go into the light. We develop a way to get you into that light now so that you can take care of all this before you get there. Then it will be a clean sheet and a beautiful, wonderful, exciting moment of purification. But you have to do it now. If you don't do it now, then you might as well get ready for what the light has to do to you. The light brings consciousness of the true self and the falseness of the ego personality, and you have to begin to give up that personality. And when it feels itself waning and losing its identity, it is qu quite fearful for those who do not understand. They don't know what's happening to them, and they go into great fear and panic. It strips the ego of all of its sense of performance. You begin to enter into that state that the Bible tells us we have to stand naked before God. That means you have taken all the mask and everything removed through this great light. It dissolves. The deeds of life appear with thought created by you. The entire life has to be faced. The light of truth. This is the judgment of the doer's life. There are no favors. There's no ill will. All has to be clean and cleared. This is the great hall of judgment. And each of us judge ourselves. There's no God sitting up there to judge you. There's no devil sitting up there to judge you. There's no recording angel. To, that's all bull. You will sit and look at yourself, and you'll look at your soul, and that which you have done that is worthy to go into this beautiful oversoul will go in there and anchor. And that which you have done that is not proper, then it goes back to the Kasich records and awaits you when you return back to another reincarnation to clean up. There is a time of suffering in this. There's no torture of fire or such thing like that. There's no fork and tail devil unless you've created one for yourself, and some people do. There are pictures one by one to relive. The hell comes by desire from having no physical body to satisfy those desires. The stronger the desire, the more the suffering. This goes on until those desires are dissolved. Some of you right now are dissolving those desires because you come up and say, I don't know, I must be cleaning up. I'm in the miseries. I said, thank God. Thank God you're cleaning up some of that stuff. It's a lot easier to do it now. A lot easier. You don't think it is. But believe me, it is. You can handle it. All kind of forms of pleasures. Selfishness, arrogance, wrongful acts against each other. Inflicts injury on anybody. Whether it be a gossip or a physical act, you have to pay for it. And you're going to find, when you're cruel to somebody, when the time comes for you to review it, you are going to suffer a hundred times more than what you did to that other person. And this is why Jesus said, love and forgive. And I have told you, forgive. Quit holding on to resentment. Begin even attitude. You're going to carry it with you when you cross over, and I'm telling you, it is not very nice to go through. You want to go to hell? Hate somebody. 
do some ugly things, you can find that you'll be there. I can promise you. I can also promise you if you won't do those things that you'll go to a beautiful place called heaven. We want to understand that these places after death for the average individual is not a place of learning. It is a place of reviewing and straightening out what you have done according to the soul pattern. Suffering is not punishment. It is purifying the soul pattern and cleaning up so that you can come back to earth and do a better job. It seems very real when you're in this dream death. There is the struggle with your own mental pictures, and they can be rough, real rough, just like it is in a dream sometimes. You can have all kind of dreams, sex dreams, somebody trying to kill you, you're trying to kill somebody, taking things that don't belong to you, running, 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 all kinds of fears. We've all had these dreams. You've had yours, I've had mine. It's good to get them over with before the death comes. We want to get over anger, hate, envy, greed, and all of these things. They are very terrible on the other side when you go through it. This is basically because you and I have been taught to live by good and evil. And I keep talking to you about how to live by righteousness, the right useness of consciousness under the laws that set forth our beautiful kingdom, the kingdom of ourself. We were created and sent forth as a beautiful kingdom. We can fulfill our kingdom as a beautiful kingdom or we can become a tyrant of anger and hate and greed and we can destroy ourselves. Many are being destroyed even now. They really are. And if you ever have the privilege to see a soulless person, you'll know exactly what I'm talking about. The new consciousness comes with dealing with righteousness. Gradually comes what we call Eisen. Eisen is a purification of the begotten Son, and each of us have the right to obtain that. Some of you are in my Radha Swami class now, reaching towards your Eisen level. You have to learn to identify your different forms and your different states of consciousness. Just like Jesus said, in my Father's house are many mansions. The problem is people get satisfied with some kind of a phenomena and they lock themselves into one of those mansions and will not go any further because the ego pompous of being able to do some kind of a physical phenomena becomes so important to an individual that they play a game and hang themselves at that level. I try to tell you, come go with me. And some of you are saying you're going too damn fast. Well, I'm still here. I'll still help you. Do your work and come with me. Once the doer, the personality, passed through the hell of desire and is purified, it takes on an angelic form. I like to refer to it as the Christ self. And this opens a door to what we call heaven. Here the doer becomes glorified. There is no suffering, no sadness, no poverty, no anger, no greed, no death, and no hate. It's a magnificent state. There is happiness and there is joy. There is no shame. There is no religion to set man against each other. Here the personality wonderfully and excitingly finds the husband, the wives, the children, the friends. Everybody is there. It will be as if no one has ever been lost. All awaits you. This is because in your consciousness you have developed this picturing. 
it will seem so real to you. And the greatest joy, of course, is how you have lived with those friends. If you have been kind, loving, and gentle, if you've been helpful, I call it being a service, then you can really look forward to a beautiful, wonderful, exciting heaven. No one will escape both the hell and the heaven we have to go through, unless you can clean it up now. And you can clean it up now. It takes a lot of hard work, but it can be done. There's music and scenery that's beautiful. There is a heaven in everyone's life. If that life has been full of bigotry, fanaticism, and filled with commercialism, religion, commercial greed, there won't be much. It'll be mostly hell. Heaven is a joy and a result of how the person has thought while they have lived on earth. Nothing is added and nothing is taken away. So that means that to everybody's heaven is different. There is no such thing as a theological heaven, a heaven which everybody goes to. There is no community called heaven. Heaven is your own state that you have developed by the way you have lived. Earth is the hall of learning, and all the others for the average person is a state of review. No one has the right to carry their ideas into another person's heaven. And you better not try. There was a gentleman who I was acquainted with back in the 50s who was quite a psychic traveler. And he was told not to interfere with another man's heaven. But being that he got into this ego ability of being so important with his ability to travel into different states that he decided he was going into a heaven and straighten something out. A hand came and grabbed him and throwed him back into his physical body and warped his whole side of his body. And he walked around like this. And he had a good body before that. You do not enter if you do, you get out quickly. One of my first experiences was when I was becoming a traveler in those levels, I became aware right inside of a man. And I jumped back and he looked at me and I looked at him and we were both kind of frightened. I said, I'm sorry, I didn't mean to intrude. What are you doing? He says, I'm tending my flowers and painting my fence. And what he was doing, he had a beautiful white home with green shutters. I'll never forget it. It was my first time into a person's heaven. And he had these flowers all around this white picket fence, and he was pulling weeds, and he also had a bucket of paint that he was painting his picket fence. He was very, very happy. It was a beautiful home, and it was magnificently kept. And I begged his pardon for stepping into his heaven world. I didn't mean to do it, it just happened. And I've had many of those experiences. Luckily, I didn't bump into people anymore. I just stand off and watch. And around the 1960s, over Packentown, most of you know that's where Packentown is, there was a large heaven created by a man. He was a rancher, and it covered most of Packentown. It was in the sky. You could see it at that dimension. I went, had the privilege of looking at it. He had his cows. He had his horses. The grass was green. He had his barn. He had his beautiful home, and he was the happiest person tending his ranch. It's no longer there. It's finally dissolved. But these are the things our heaven world are made out of. There is no time in heaven states for new events. They're all old conditions of life. 
So heaven is like eternity to the person that's there. They have no sense of time. They are just enjoying. And they have a way of making it so beautiful, so magnificently, as the mind wants it to be, that it is truly a heaven world. During earth life, please believe me, you create your heaven and hell. So when you die or leave the physical body, there is the sorting out, separating. After all ideas have come to an end, there is the peace and the rest. Like when you and I get into meditation and go into that beautiful state we call turn off. And when you have reached <clears throat> a beautiful turn off and you come back, you don't know who you are, you don't know where you are, what time it is, it takes a few minutes for you to recollect the remembering of the ego personality. You have went into one of these heaven states. Maybe you remember, maybe you don't. But many, many a time I have come out of meditation and thought it was time to go to work and I had just got home or I had got up in the morning and meditated, and I have actually done this. Got up in the morning, got dressed, went and meditated, and went and took off my clothes and went back to bed. <laughs> Paulie said, what are you doing? I said, oh my God, it's, it's morning, isn't it? All ideas have to come to an end. All of them, not one can remain before you go into the great peace. When you sit down and meditate and to go to the state that I'm talking about, life here don't exist. It just doesn't exist until you come back.